defensive front for San Francisco. And from the pocket, Burrow now stepping back, trying to find some breathing room, and it's still alive as he throws, and it's caught by Higgins. What a sensation. Williams had a block, and Brown had a block. The two tackles go, and deep he's got him. Chase at the 20. You can kiss him goodbye. Touchdown, Cincinnati. 64 yards. On first down, Burrow with time. Looking deep, looking for Chase. He's got it, and Jamar Chase on the deep ball for the touchdown. 63 yards, Burrow to Chase. Who day, Bengal fans? He is Mon. I am Jake. That is Eric. And once again, we are excited to have our buddy Justin Wells on the show. This is the Bengals pulse, the heartbeat of our Cincinnati Bengals. Gentlemen, we are right around two weeks away from the NFL draft. It is getting to the point where we are getting closer and closer to Christmas in springtime. Uh, I know you guys are excited. I'm excited. Today we have Mock Draft 4.0, so that should be a lot of fun. But before we get to that, Mon, how's your week been, buddy? Good. Good. Very busy. Uh, Glad this eclipse crap is over with. Um, (laughs) Just working a lot and getting ready for this draft. Excited about this show. It's always fun to do a mock draft, and it's always fun to always be right when I do these mock drafts. So it's great. (laughs) Okay. I guess he's we'll picking go. Brock Bowers today. We'll go. <laughs> we'll go with that. Justin, how you doing, my man? How's your week been, buddy? Oh, good. Uh, well, I spent about twelve minutes staring directly at the sun today. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> how'd that work out for you? Bright green spots right now. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, my man, how's the new job? Everything good? Everything's going great. You know. Uh, Seeing those uh, highlights up on there, that that Houston Texans man, that was right in front of our end zone. Uh, it still gives me chills. That was one of the, yeah, the awesome. coolest plays ever. Um, really thought that was a destiny game, but uh, it was well, exciting let, nonetheless. You know that that kind of leads me into this this first topic before we get into the draft, and that that's TB, right? TB uh, again, not to bring up uh, bad stuff, but obviously dropped uh, the game winner. I mean, I don't know how else to say it drops a game winner in that game. And I think a lot of people are shocked right now that that Tyler Boyd is still on the market. Mon, really quickly, we don't spend a lot of time on this, but are you shocked that Tyler Boyd is still on the market? Um, yeah, a little bit. I guess his asking price is a little high. He's a prideful guy. Probably wants a he's probably not getting more than league minimum, maybe a couple million a year. He probably wants more than that. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to agree to disagree on that game. I get it that yeah Dropped the ball would have been a winning game. Uh, we would have won the game. But there were so many other plays in that game that 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 led to that loss, and uh, you know a lot of Bengal hate for for Tyler Boyd. And I, I, he's always been one of my favorite Bengals. Well, and he and to jump in there, man, he w- we wouldn't even have been down there if it wasn't for him. He broke off that long play that I wish he would have got into the end zone, but we wouldn't even have been. Yeah, there. yeah, you're right. But yeah, I mean, I mean that drop was instrumental. We would have won the game, but. We could have won it I mean, you got to you gotta make – you still got to make plays when you get the opportunity, guys. I mean, Yeah, but you don't, throw, you don't throw a ball in the end zone when there's three people around your wide receiver like Joe Burrow did the, the drive before. You know, I mean, that was a horrible yeah, interception. But it's – yes, but, but it did – but it still came down to that play, right? Uh, yeah, uh, it did. Obviously, it was the, the, the last play really for the Bengals, and it was just so instrumental. I, I get it. I get the frustration. I was too. But I, just a lot of shade thrown at Tyler Boyd. I think overall he had a really solid Bengal career. I hope he gets another uh, chance somewhere, but not in Pittsburgh. Well, it kind of tailed off at the end, right? We, I mean, we saw he really struggled in the Super Bowl. Um, had some had some key uh, non plays there, and and uh, but yeah, I, I mean, obviously solid overall career. I don't want to harp on Tyler Boyd, but I do think it's interesting that he hasn't got signed yet. Justin, let me ask you real quick. Is 
has he not got signed because maybe he is asking too much, like Mon said? Is he is he a little bit uh, longer in the tooth, or is it because this draft class of receivers is so damn good? Justin, what do you think? Well, I mean, it could be a little bit of all of those, but I I, I think the probably the biggest factor is the you know the age. He's going to turn thirty later this year. I mean, we're we're seeing it now where the we, you know we've seen it over the years that with the running back position where when you hit 30 teams start to you know hey uh, i don't know yeah. and now you're kind of seeing that at the wide receiver position as well the number of guys that are on active rosters on week one who are over the age of 30 at the wide receiver position has really started to dwindle so um yeah i think for for boyd it's just going to come down to um maybe uh hanging around and seeing who gets hurt in training camp or on the way to training camp and a need arises and hey maybe that becomes your best option in terms of finding a gig this for the 2024 season yeah good point i mean that's a, a really good point there i want to say who day to everybody joining us tonight thank you guys so much for joining us uh obviously uh the uh national championship coming on about an hour and a half we won't keep you guys that long but thank you guys for joining us tonight uh right here on the Bengals pulse for mock draft 4.0 uh guys a little bit of news this week on a a, a name that has been thrown around the Bengals a lot uh obviously a, a young man not making a very good decision two and a half weeks before the draft uh, and, and, and Mr. Sweat from Texas, he he's going to get uh, punished by the NFL. Uh, again, uh, Mon, you, you had um, sent us that tweet. I'm not sure who tweeted it out with the information. Maybe Rappaport, maybe Schefter. I don't remember who it was. But the NFL is allowed to uh, punish uh, anybody that is uh, in the draft. They're considered NFL players now. So it'd be interesting to see what the NFL does with Sweat. We just saw Tier Tart get signed by the Dolphins, a target um, that has been around the Bengals for a while since free agency started. He visited with the Bengals, uh, supposedly. Uh, he signs with the Dolphins, so another defensive tackle off the free agency board. And now Sweat uh, could be – off the Bengals board as well, Mon. Really quick, uh, what are your thoughts on Mr. Sweat, and do you think the Bengals take him off their big board? Uh, he's obviously going to drop. It wasn't a wise move. Uh, that's close to the draft. You can't control yourself. And uh, I read somewhere yesterday he admitted that he partied a lot at Texas, and it's not a good look, and it's dangerous. You shouldn't do that in the first place. But dropping, absolutely, he's going to drop. I think uh, I read a lot of you know takes yesterday from Bengal fans that he's going to be off the Bengals board. I think that's a little excessive. I don't see that. I could see him being a, a day three pick potentially. If he's there in the fourth round, fifth round, I could see the Bengals uh, jumping on that, uh, giving him an opportunity. He's a young guy. Um, hopefully he learns from his mistake. He's a great talent. And uh, taken off the board, I think, is a little uh, excessive. Um, I think if he's there and maybe – third or fourth round, the Bengals would do it. Yeah, I, I think I think they could too. I, I mean, obviously he is, uh, you know, you get a guy like that in the fifth round, maybe he doesn't play the first four games, but still worth the risk, right, Justin? I mean, you take a risk on that if if you were the Cincinnati Bengals and you're sitting there in the fifth round and, and that sweat sitting there, you know? Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's going to drop that far. Uh, the, the, the problem – so I guess kind of the, the thing about Sweat is that um, there's a lot of defensive tackles in this draft, but there's not a lot of guys that have that kind of profile where you're going to be able to depend on them from day one to come in and eat up space like he does because he's a 370-pound man who can move very well at that size. So um, while it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up dropping – you know, 15, 20, 30 picks as a result. I think the fact that uh, there just aren't a lot of talents like him available in the draft, there just aren't. And, and that, that goes for just about any draft, not just this year, but right. the number of guys you'll find at that level of athleticism and that size, just they don't grow on trees. So I think if there is a, you know, silver lining for him, 
Um, he's lucky that he has the type of pro athletic profile that he does. But yeah, dumb move. Uh, hope he learns from it. Hope so, he learned. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Go ahead, Eric. Well, that's a that's a good question, and and all you guys can chime in. But um, the draft simulator that we're going to be using has him the forty first ranked player. So that's a second round pick. Uh, some people are mocking him to the third round. Some people say the fourth. Uh, going off of this, they've got him basically a second round pick. Do you do you all think that he's going to drop? from the second to the third round or all the way into the fourth. You know, some people are out there saying, well, the Bengals can get him in the fourth. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you want to take a risk on that. Where do we realistically see him falling? I, I think yeah. he's going to drop. I, I don't think he'll drop. Uh, he will drop. Um, I don't think he's going to drop until the fourth round. I mean, could he? I guess so. But uh, I, I think he's just a that good of a talent. Uh, he's going to pay for it. Um, he will drop some, but – I think, like I said a few minutes ago, I don't think he's going to get taken off anybody's draft board. So you don't think this is a, a what was that guy's name? Jeremy uh, uh, Laramie. Yeah, Tunsil. Larry Tunsil. Laramie Laramie Tunsil. You, you don't think you don't think this is another situation like that? Listen, you got to know his name, Jake. He's one of the highest paid offensive linemen out there right now. Isn't right. He, and he, he shut is, down Miles really, Garrett in the playoffs. He shut him down listen, in the playoffs. He's a good player. That, that's that's my point. Is a guy like Larry Tunsil does drop when he when you know obviously with the with the mask and everything that he had going on he drops and now he is now he's one of the best offensive linemen in the game. Do you take that risk? And I, I agree. I, I think you have to take that risk if he's uh, you know if it's there. Obviously, you don't want to reach or anything like that. Stranger four twenty says. 97 or 115 would be good. Ronald says 97. So right around that third, fourth round, um, we have uh, we have some takes on that. So it would be interesting to see what happens with Sweat. It's going to be interesting to see tonight if one of you guys decides to take Sweat uh, and where we take him. Before we do that, though, Eric, you wanted to real quick uh, – have us go over the our big board. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, I wanted to just let's just throw the prospects up there. You know, every team has their big board, and you know, we've got these consensus rankings out there, but they include cornerbacks. They they include players that the Bengals just we're not going to target. Yeah, we have a lot of conversations. We go a lot of back back and forth in our group texts about you want to take the best pop, the best player available, but obviously you're not going to take the best quarterback available. So I thought we could just kind of go down the list real quick. And um, before we get into drafting, just talk about the players that are definitely not on our board and then maybe talk about some of these, where these players are ranked. And if you have any um, differences in opinion on, you know, where they have, have them ranked, uh, you know, take all the 10 minutes to talk through it. Let me throw that up on the screen. Yeah, uh, and I'm just going to use the uh, the draft simulator. I've got it paused here. We'll just go with the way that they have them ranked and um, get some conversation going around it. By the way, Mon, the Reds bats have come alive tonight, baby, up 5 nothing right now. Yeah, I see that. I see that. All right. All right. So, um, Justin, why don't we start with you, my man? Um, talk a little bit about, again, the Bengals at 18. And, and it, I guess let's be realistic about – what are some of the opportunities we have? Uh, pull us, pull out some names, Justin, that you would, that Justin Wells would be happy with if that name was called at 18 and the Bengals walk away with that player. Well, we were talking, and you look at those names right there, and we were talking a little bit before the show about how uh, Fashanu could, there's been some buzz that he might be dropping a little bit. I mean, if he's there at 18, I think you really got to take a long look at, at him. Um, really, for all these, any of these offensive linemen that are there at the top of the board, um, you know, I, I, I don't think Alt's going to be there. But, yeah, any of those guys, um, if, if you do get into a weird situation where Brock Bowers falls to 18, which I just don't see, um, yeah. but if he's there, I think you got to got to take a strong, close look at that. Um, and I've said this before, um, and it was interesting that uh, the Athletic in their mock draft today um, had the Bengals going this route. 
we, you know, we've talked about the positions that are, are critical and obviously offensive line and def- interior defensive line are ones we feel like they're going to hammer in this draft. But if there's kind of a wild card position I think they could go at 18, I really think it's corner. And uh, in the athletic today, then their three round mock draft, they had the Bengals taking Nate Wiggins from Clemson. Who's an intriguing player. He's only 20, he's only 20 years old. Um, he's on the light side. He's only about 170, 175 pounds, but he's six one. Ran a four two eight at the combine. Um, yeah, he's a little on the lean side, but being that young, hopefully he can go put on 10, 15 pounds still and uh, fill out a little bit more. Uh, I really feel like the Bengals have some good depth at corner but I'm not sure they have that number one lockdown guy. And if they, if there's a corner they really like, or if someone drops, whether it be uh, Quinion Mitchell or um, uh, Arnold from Alabama, or if they decide to go Wiggins from Clemson, um, those are names I would not be upset to see uh, at 18. Another name I'm seeing being thrown around is that, uh, that kid right underneath Wiggins go scroll down there, Eric, um, the corner from uh, Iowa or safety yeah. slash corner that Cooper yeah. Dijon. I'm seeing him getting thrown around quite a bit in that in that Bengal range of like 15 through 20. Um, I'm seeing that guy's name getting thrown around quite a bit. Yeah, and um, yeah, that that would wouldn't have a problem with that one. Uh, again. I think the only thing about Dijon is that um, I think there might be a little concern whether or not he's a he's a true number one. He's probably someone who you think more of a guy like Dax Hill, where he's got a lot of athleticism. Um, you've got to figure out what you want to do with him. He might be more of a like a Swiss Army knife in the secondary hybrid type, yeah. Yeah, and 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 I don't think the Bengals have that type of knee. They've got a lot of guys like that. Um, yeah. I think they need more of a true number one lockdown. Wouldn't be upset to see Dijon there, but yeah, I think uh, I think there's there's other directions I'd rather see him go. And uh, another name we talked about, who's right below Dijon there, is uh, Graham Barton, who's a name that really seems to be rising here as we work our way to the draft. And I know we've talked about him in these mock drafts before. Uh, was a really really great offensive lineman for Duke this past year at left tackle, but he has experience at center. He could play guard. Um, uh, just really a very versatile player who, other than the fact, he, you know, he's a little on the light side, he's only like 305, 310, would like to see him put on a little bit more weight. Um, he's kind of, I think, working his way into that top group of offensive linemen with some of the other names we've uh, discussed, uh, Fasanu, uh, Mims, and so on and so forth. Going back to corner real quick, too, I don't think that is very far-fetched because – we all know the Bengals love corner in the first round. We've seen it a a, a lot more more times than not. The yeah. Bengals going corner uh, in the first round. They love it. Mon, how about you? Uh, any names there that you would love to see? Uh, like you would feed us all ice cream cake if you saw the Bengals take them at 18. Uh, any names for us, Mon? I, I know what position. I just want to know the names. <laughs> No, I, I, I've harped on it since the end of the season, you know, about the trenches, offensive line, defensive line. But I agree with what Justin said. Um, you know, BPA could, could could be there. I mean, that cornerback, if Arnold drops, if uh, Mitchell from Toledo's there, I could see the Bengals jumping all over that. Um, you know, I, 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 I've seen so many mock drafts recently on Twitter, you know, reputable uh, NFL national sites. They picked five, six offensive linemen going before 18. So – we talked about it briefly last week and the week before. Could they potentially trade back four, five, six spots? Let's say there's five or six players they like. You know, Fatanu, Mitchell. Um, you know, uh, you just mentioned the the offensive lineman from Duke. If he's there, what if they go back a few slots and pick one of those guys? I would love to see that. But I've seen Fatanu going in the top ten in some mocks. I love the Mitchell kid, the cornerback from Toledo. You can never have enough corners. I think he could be a lockdown number one. You guys won't like this, but the Bengals have interviewed a lot of defensive ends. Burse, Chop Robinson, all these guys. We don't know. The Bengals could could easily jump and pick one of those guys. Um, 
I have a bad feeling that some of the top tackles we want, they're not going to be there at 18. I think Mims could be available, but yeah. you know, Mims, uh, great talent, ha- doesn't have a lot of tape at Georgia. I think he's only started eight games. I think he could be an option there. But um, the more and more I think about it, remember Mock Draft 1.0, you had Murphy, Jake, mm-hmm. from Texas. I could see that potentially being the pick. You know, we laughed about it afterwards, like, wow, why did we pick him? Look at all this. That, that could end up being the, the selection after all. But a lot of options, and we know this every draft. There's a guy in the top ten that ends up sliding back that the Bengals don't, didn't expect to be there. They might jump all over. Remember Leon Hall years ago was yeah. a top ten projection. He dropped into the 20s. Well, was it, the wasn't, Miles Murphy, wasn't Miles Murphy that guy last year? Wasn't he ranked higher? I, remember I, when did, we, I did see a lot year. of mocks that had him as a top top 15 pick. Yeah, yeah. Bengals early guy. on, he slid a little as the draft process went on. But he was yeah. definitely early on being mocked as a top 10, top 15 guy because of the athleticism, which he showed at the Combine. And he mm-hmm. did show towards the end of the season. I mean, there were times where he was running. I think he, didn't he run Lamar Jackson down? There was, there was a couple quarterbacks that didn't get away from him out towards the edge. So um, we started to see it. Yeah, he definitely so, flashed toward the end of the season. And we've, and we've seen – We've seen a lot of we we've seen a lot of um, talk about where Miles Murphy would be in this draft as far as edge rushers, and I've seen a lot uh, a lot of them with his name at the top of the list as far as edge rushers in this draft. So we'll see we'll see how it works out for the Bengals. It could end up being a steal for the Bengals. Miles Murphy. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go opposite of you guys by the way the reds up eight nothing they were three of 30 with men's and in, in runners in scoring position they broke it baby the bats have come alive all right so i'm gonna go a little bit opposite of you guys and i know you're gonna be like oh here we go with jake and the, the offensive skill players and blah blah blah. i know it's i'm gonna already hear that but mon you you sent out a t- uh well you didn't send out the tweet you you sent it to us and and kind of brought it to our attention where I don't know who it was, Mon, and you if you have it close by, make sure you make sure you give him a shout out. But uh whoever tweeted it out talked about if you don't go get a skill guy or an offensive tackle in the top 50 picks, you're gonna miss out. And to me, guys, right now, the Bengals need an impact player. That's just my opinion. I know some of you don't agree with that, but I, I believe that the Bengals cannot go out at 18 and get uh, somebody to back up somebody or a developmental player or a guy we got to wait a year or two to play. We need an impact player right now. I don't. I, I agree with Justin. Unfortunately, I don't think Brock Bowers falls to the Bengals. If he does, they better run to the podium with Brock Bowers' name on the ticket. Uh, Brian Thomas is another guy we've seen thrown around, the receiver from LSU. Again, I, I am just in the belief at this point that the Bengals have got to go out and get an impact type player that's going to play right now and help this team win. It was Mike Renner from Pro Football Focus that sent Mike that tweet out. Yes. He said, "Yeah, Mike have, if you don't get, you have to get an offensive lineman and a wide receiver within the first fifty picks." That's no, not the way it was first, worded, but that's he said that's the what he was first two days, so the first three rounds. First I, thought, three I thought he said the top 50. I thought he said top 50. I thought he said top 50 too, but, I, but, yeah, yeah, no, uh, but early, you got to get him early. That, yeah. You got to get him early. Right. I mean, you got to get, you got to go out and get one of those guys. And to me, if, if one of those difference makers is there, we still don't know the T Higgins situation, how that's going to play out. Uh, the Bengals have got to make a move and find a guy that can play football right now and make an impact right now mon we 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 complained about that all year this year how all these other teams drafted these guys that are making huge impacts on their football team this year this past year as rookies and did we see that well we saw a little bit of that with battle we saw that in spurts with dj turner we didn't really see that with miles murphy he was a rotational guy but I just want to see the Bengals go out and get a guy that can play football right now, play a lot of football right now, and is going to make an impact on the game. Uh, well, Jake, I mean, I guess what I want to say is you know, 
the Bengals have two pretty glaring needs. We know that right tackle or offensive yes. line, defensive line. There's not mm-hmm. really any starter spots up. So like a Brock Bowers would be the third or fourth option mm-hmm. in this offense. Great talent. Oh. I get it. You know, T might not be there. And I I just um I don't want the shiny toy. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to my, my my talking points for the last three months. We need to get offensive linemen and defensive linemen. That that's what we so, gotta get. Let me jump let me jump in, Jake, because we yeah. we have spots of available. I mean, I I've, I share Jake's thoughts on this because I know, Mon, you always bring up the point that the Bengals are always drafting to replace next year's free agents. And so you you open those positions like offensive tackle. You open those those defensive end. But I want – this is our window. Our window is, is yes, it's Joe Burrow's whole career, but it's wide open right now. Go get that wide receiver that can play slot. Go get Brock Bowers and interchange Brock Bowers – and Gasecki in the slot. That's an open spot. And if you imagine, use your imagination, you could put Brock Bowers in that role. But Eric, I, Eric, or, Eric, I, yeah. I guess what I'm trying to say is weapons have never been a problem for the Bengals. I believe in weapons. Joe Burrow needs weapons. He needs that dynamic wide receiver. That, that that's been something he's had his whole career. The reason we can't get over the hump is our trenches are average, and that's they are. They are average. Even our starters are – they're just okay at best. And uh, we got to fix it. And that, that's if, you, a point if you go back to that – sorry, Justin. If you go back to the ASC championship game where Tyler Boyd goes out and, and Trent Nerwin can't get separation, if our slot wide receiver gets separation, we, we're going to back-to-back Super Bowls. So I, I just – yes, Fair point. you have a little bit more time, but they're, they're so – over the middle, tight end and slot wide receiver are game changers. Go ahead, Justin. What are you going to say, Glenn? Yeah. Um, no, I mean, in terms of pick eight, I, I agree with, and, the, and I just checked. That's what Renner said was if you, here, I'm going to read the, I'm gonna, if I'm an NFL GM in this year's draft, I don't care what my roster looks like. I'm taking at least one offensive lineman and one wide receiver before the end of day two. So, and I agree with that. And I, and I, I 100% agree with that. But if we're talking about pick 18, and you're going to go get, you know, uh, Thomas or whatever um, from LSU, uh, to me, that signals that you're moving on from T. Because if you take him with the idea that T's coming back, what what are we doing here? Because we do have those needs uh, on the offensive line and the defense. Thank you, line. Jennifer. And um, – <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I but yeah, Paul Bowers is there because he is such a special player and he, and he is kind of does some things that most tight ends don't. Absolutely, I'm fine with that. But that's that's an instance where you have a BPA that falls that isn't expected to be there is suddenly there. Um, but, yeah. but yeah, if, if it's if, – if T's coming back and Brock Bowers isn't there, to me, you got to address the trenches. Yeah, corner, I, 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 because I, corner, yeah, that, that's a particular position. No, uh, I, I get you. The Renner tweet changed me a little bit because I was so obsessed with the trenches, but I respect him. I, I love it when he's on podcasts. I think what he says is so, uh, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense. And if we can get a skill player, if, if, if the B, if, if Brock Bowers is there at 18, he's going to be BPA. And I could see the Bengals picking him. All right. Would I want Fotano if he's available? And I, I, I can see the Bengals saying, hey, we're going to go BPA. You can never go wrong with best player available. Uh, they'll have nine other picks to address the trenches, and hopefully they get it right. Yeah. I, I mean, again, I, I'm not I'm not saying those aren't needs. I just want to see – and I'm I'm with Eric. I mean, I'm I'm looking at this offense, right? That I mean, the Texans just make a move and, and trade for Stephon Diggs. You can never have enough weapons – Mon, when you have an elite quarterback and I'm with Eric, I look at this team and I've watched this team not, not have the depth at wide receiver when a guy goes down and I'm not sure I'm ready to say that if T goes down again, we're, we're looking at Yoshi and Chucky sizzle. I mean, I like those guys, but I'm, I'm not sure I'm ready to put all those eggs in that basket yet. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's get to it, guys. Let's get to mock 
and and let's see if any of this stuff comes to fruition. Uh, what we are going to do is uh, tonight we're going to do it a little bit different. Eric, why don't you go ahead and explain how we are going to do this tonight? Sure. Um, we are we're only set up for five rounds. Uh, after that, I think it just it gets uh, wild wild west, and a lot of guys are there. Um, we're going to sim up to our pick and. I'll call out some of the guys that are already taken, uh, the top players available, then we'll go around the room. You guys give your comments. Uh, don't tell us who you're picking. Um, we're just going to make some comments on who's there, and then we'll go one by one, and you guys make your picks. And um, Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll move on. All right. Let's go. Uh, do you, before we start, do you guys want to discuss any trades, or are we going to reject all trades? I want to trade up and take Brock Bowers. <laughs> well, give, before, give whoever it is, whatever they want. Give before me we Bowers. start, before we start all of this, if no. if uh, April twenty fifth comes around and Brock Bowers is the pick, Mon has to agree to buy a Brock Bowers jersey and uh, wear and an Bowers ice cream cake opener. and an ice cream cake with Brock Bowers <laughs> on it. His face. We're gonna we're gonna get oh. a Brock Bowers cut out for draft day and put it behind Mon. That's that's, <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. All right, let's get started. I won't talk crap about UGA for a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> that now that's big time. That's yeah. big time. <laughs> We're still officially banned in Athens. Yeah, so. <laughs> I like the 52s and REM. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, All right you guys ready to roll? Let's, do let's it. go. Okay, let's go. As expected, Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels off the board. Caleb Williams and it's <laughs> Future L'Oreal uh, endorsement deal. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, it it oh, oh, man. Are you kidding me? Uh, Seahawks. Sorry. So, let me re I'm going to reject these so we can talk about for our audio listeners what actually happened there. Okay. Uh, wow. Atlanta wants to give us the world for pick 18. Um, sorry, Atlanta. Go look for that. Ricky Williams. Give us Jesse Bates uh, back. Yeah. So. <laughs> We have a surprise. It's an entire draft like Dicka did in 99. That was surprise at seven. Um, the Titans went with Fashano instead of Joe Alt. Joe Alt went to the Bears at nine. Fuaga went to the Jets at 10. Oh, and um, Fatano went to the Saints at 14. The um, Buccaneers trade up to get Florida State Jared Burse. And then the Seahawks take our boy Brock Bowers 16th, and the Jaguars take Amarius Mims. So, what are we left with? We've got Layatu Latu, Edge from UCLA, JC Latham, Brian Thomas Jr., Johnny Newton, Brian Murphy, Nate Wiggins. All the guys we just talked about are still there. Graham so, Barton, Graham Barton, Jackson Powers Johnson, Kool Aid McKinstry. Uh, Let's go, Justin. Who you want to talk about some of these guys that are available here? Uh, sure. Yeah, I mean uh, Newton and Murphy are fill a need. Uh, obviously, they don't have the type of uh, mass that uh, DJ Reader had in the middle. They're more of your pass rushing, uh, you know, disruptors in turn on the interior. But uh, Bengals could go with more than one DT in this draft. So wouldn't be a bad move to go Newton or Murphy. Uh, offensive line, obviously J.C. Latham is very talented. Uh, and then Graham Barton is a guy I'd be looking at there. And then Nate Wiggins, who we saw the Bengals take in the uh, athletic mock draft today. And I like their, in that three-round mock draft, I think they, they had the Bengals going Wiggins in the first. Vondre Sweat in the second, Brendan Rice, son of Jerry, in the top of the third, and then the bottom of the third, they went uh, Roger Rosengarten. So they covered those four spots we've just talked about, mm -hmm. DT, OT, wide receiver, uh, corner. All right. What about well, you, Jake? Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you to all of our listeners for participating. We got a lot of listeners that are throwing out the trenches, they are all pro mon for some reason. Stop being pro mon, guys. It's <laughs> it's just disgusting. All right. Um, my guy's sitting there. I, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm taking Brian Thomas. It's a done deal. I'm running up to the podium. This is a guy 
who 6'3", 205, he led the FBS in touchdown receptions with 17. I mean, give the best quarterback in the NFL another weapon. That's that's what you do when you have an elite quarterback. Give me Brian Thomas. It's again, if the T Higgins thing doesn't work out, it's done. It's a, it's it's okay. We got our replacement. If it does work out, now we have the th- the best receiving core in the NFL with Brian Thomas, Jamar Chase, and T Higgins. I am running up to the podium. Give me Brian Thomas. We've had pretty good luck with LSU players too. So give me Brian Thomas. What about you, Mon? What are you thinking here? Um, I'm going to go JC Latham, uh, offensive lineman from Alabama. Surprise, surprise to everybody. He's a six <laughs> six three fifty. He's a big guy. The Bengals are want big tackles now with Brown and and, and Brown. So they want these guys to be huge. Uh, a lot of good tape. A lot of people are turned off. He didn't really run or you know, do a lot at his pro day or at the combine. He has a lot of film and his film is really good. Uh, the guy's going to help in the run game. He's just a big dude, good player, started at a major university, five-star recruit. I think the only knock against him, he does have some tendencies to get flags thrown on him. I don't like that, but he's one of the best tackles in this draft. Some mocks have him as a top 10 pick. The the database I'm using um, has him as, like I think, the second-rated offensive lineman in the draft or the third-rated offensive lineman in this draft. I'm taking J.C. Latham. I think um, – He'll be our starting right tackle for years to come. So we'll go to Justin here. And Justin, I get your comment on this. We don't see a lot to drop him that often available for us to pick. Um, but any thoughts on him? I mean, is that best player available according to their rankings? You know, he's the 13th best available. What do yeah. you think about him? Yeah, I mean, uh, Latu and uh, Latu and Verse, uh, definitely two. Even Chop Robinson, I think, has been kind of attached to the Bengals. I, you know, I, I've always been kind of the opinion that if you can get good pass rushers in the first round, um, that's never a bad move. But I just think with the needs elsewhere, for me, it's not as uh, attractive in this particular draft class. So who are you picking here? I, you know what, I'm gonna go. Just to kind of uh, mix it up here, I'm going to go Byron Murphy, 20, uh, ET Texas. ET so before before we make a pick and before we move on, anyone think that this this board lends itself to a trade back? I mean, we've got Latham, Thomas, Newton, nice. Murphy. No. I mean, we can no, propose got, a trade I and mean, move back a little bit. Listen, I'm, I'm, just let me throw my two cents in real quick. I think if the board falls like that – I think all three of us, whether it's Thomas or Latham or Murphy, the Bengals have an opportunity to fill a a need with a top 15 player. There's no way you trade back here. Mon? I, 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 if there's six or seven players there available that they have the same grades on, I could see it. I, I want to say one other thing about the Bengals offensive line last year. Starting five started every game. That doesn't happen very often. We don't really know about our depth. We have no depth. I think I, I don't expect our starting five to start every game this year. Uh, I hope I'm wrong. I hope they do. I just don't see it. We don't have quality depth, and I think that's why it's more. It's so important to get a premium. Use a premium pick on an offensive lineman. Latham might not start right away, but I can assure you he'll play quite a few snaps. Well, I think either way, I mean, this is the best this is the best board I've seen us have. Uh when you guys say, I mean, of all the of all all four mocks, this is the best board we've had at 18. Wouldn't you guys agree? Um yes. I think yeah, but I mean, usually there's been one offensive tackle. This time it's Latham. Thomas has been there for I think at least three of them. Uh Newton and Murphy have typically been there. So yeah, I mean the, the other thing I'm kind of harping on is that you've got 10 picks, so I don't really know what trading back does for you in this draft. Uh, if, if there was a draft where, if this was a draft where Bengals had maybe five or six picks, then I could, it would make more sense to consider moving back. But I think in this particular draft, 
um, yeah, I'm with you, Jake. I would just I would just pull the trigger here. Yeah. All right. Let's well, let's. Uh, I'm, so we got. I'm, I'm going to uh, be the the judge jury on this, and uh, I'm going to make the pick. Um, and we're going to go with Latham. I think Mon made a great oh, argument. Uh, if it was Brock Bowers, uh, I'm running up there to draft him. But we're going to let Mon have this one. Why is everybody pro Mon tonight? This is this is worse than watching the Reds go three you, and thirty he, with runners in. He scoring. got his bribes in before you, Jake. I bought I bought him lunch today. That's why. <laughs> If Bowers is if Bowers is there, you run to that that podium like a Georgia player running from the cops in Athens, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord. All right. Oh, there we go. Okay. Bengals Pulse not welcome in South Georgia. Like oh, oh, Lad McConkey. Hey, I, I just want to say this. I because I, I give I always give Justin a hard time about the Gators and stuff, but let me let me say this uh, about Justin. Remember from the first show that we've had Justin on, he raved about Lad McConkey, and that guy is flying up the boards. I have seen him mocked in in like twenty first. to twenty five now. Yes, so kudos to you, Justin. They, I'm telling you guys right now, do not be surprised if Lad McConkey goes in the in the top, you know, twenty to twenty five range. Yeah, well, and the thing was is that he had great film is he doesn't have crazy numbers and of course in that offense you know there that ball gets distributed to a lot of different players but yeah um i think the, the game changer for him was going out to the combine and laying down a sub four four forty which confirmed that what we saw on tape was that this guy gets open he gets behind the defense there is a reason and it's because he's really fast all right. So All right, we, we we're now sitting at pick eighty. Um, some really bad news for Jake and and uh, and everybody on this team. The Chiefs at twenty traded up to get Brian Thomas Jr. The Texans exactly. that's what we don't knocking want. it out of the park. Trade up to get Brian Murphy. Johnny Newton goes to the Vikings. Cooper DeJean to the Colts. Jackson Power Johnson to the Steelers. Uh, um, as you just mentioned, Lad McConkey goes. First pick in the second round to the Panthers, uh, Graham Barton to the Patriots. And let's see who else is no longer on our board. Michael Hall Jr. is goes to the Panthers. Uh, okay, we're sitting at pick 49. Top players on the board, Michael Penix Jr., that's not up for us. Tavondre Sweat, Trey Benson, um, Rook Aurora, 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 Aurora. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I think we need that just so we can good hear player. Uh, yeah. uh, Dan Holder scream his name out. Yeah, um, interesting that Tavondre Sweat is the top player on the board, but um, another can you go up a little bit more on that. Okay. For him? Where do you want to see down or up? yeah? Yeah, we want more players. I want to see K. Cooper BB, uh, cornerback from Missouri, Leonard Taylor, Patrick, Patrick Paul, Paul, Braylon Rice, Ben Sinat. <laughs> So we went offensive tackle. Um, based on the conversation before, we're looking for impact players. Uh, uh, Eric, players Eric not only did you mess up our draft taking Latham, you <laughs> gave him to the Kansas City Chiefs. So congratulations. You've now ruined two parts of this draft, Eric, in one fail swoop. So I might as well draft Trey Branson then. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mon, you start this one off, Mon. What do you think? Ah, uh, Sweat being there at 41 is really intriguing. I know there's baggage right now with the DUI. Uh, I really have been reading up a lot about the uh, Isaac from Penn State. Very intriguing. Um, I'm not a Franklin guy. I'm just not a Franklin guy at all. Cooper Beebe, I'm really intrigued about. I think he's going to be a star, big-time star. Talk about fixing your offensive line for years to come. But uh, I think our second biggest need is that defensive line. I know uh, Rook Orohoro is more of a three-tech, but he's a good run stopper too. Um, he's not uh, – you know, he can play up and down the line. I know he doesn't have the mass of a reader, but um, I'm going to take him. Um, the defensive tackle from Clemson, no, number 48 on their big board, he's going to be my selection in the second round. Rook or whatever. Sorry about that. 
Ruth Oro. Oro, Oro. God bless you. Oro, Oro. <laughs> All right. Um, what about you, Jake? God, Eric, you ruined this board. But I'm going to fix your mistake, Eric. And this is this is tough. This is tough for me to do this. But you you didn't let me get a weapon for Joe Burrow in the first round. So I am going to take Trey Benson running back from Florida State. And I am going to now solidify this uh, three-headed monster backfield that we can have. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why. I, I don't see – I don't – that Tavondre Sweat thing, I know, Mon, you're not going to – you're not as worried about it, but I told you I, I cannot have a guy that I pick in the first two rounds that are not going to make an impact right away. And we're not even sure what this guy is going to – when he's going to be playing next year because of his stupidity. So I'm going to go – again, I'm looking at it as the best player available, right? Michael Penix Jr., we don't need. Tavondre Sweat is a, is a moron. Give me Trey Benson, the next best player available, running back from Florida State. And now our backfield is nasty. Justin, what do you think? Yeah, uh, I think I took Benson in the second round in one of these mocks. So, yeah, I mean, I I, I hear what you're saying. Um, he isn't a really intriguing player because he's got that size-speed combo. And he is a good receiver out of the backfield. So, yeah. Um, would definitely be a nice weapon for for Joe Burrow. So I don't think that's a, a bad pick at all uh, in terms of best player available, although I think it kind of gets away from needs. But um, I've always said that I think that – I think with the running back position, while we've seen it devalued so much in recent years – the best running backs, the most productive running backs, still get drafted usually in that late first to early third range. So, and this is where we're looking at picking. But in terms of my my draft pick, now if I were going off my first round pick being Murphy, I'm going Cooper Beebe all the way because I think that is a nice addition to the offensive line. He's obviously more of an interior guy, so it doesn't really fix any of the tackle issues, but. He's a potential three-position guy, could play left guard, center, or right guard. So that's a nice get to increase the competition on the interior of the offensive line for the Bengals. But in this draft, this mock where we've already taken Latham in the first round, I'm not sure that's a good fit. So I'm going to go with Sweat, even though despite his issues, Phil's a huge need. Fills a huge gap at the uh, nose tackle position. And despite the fact he'll have to sit the first probably three or four games, uh, I'm comfortable with bringing him on board and hoping that uh, he straightens out. Okay. So I, I'm of the opinion that this – I don't think that this is factoring in. Maybe they're going to keep him there, but I don't know that the AI is factoring in the issue. I, I think he'll be there for one of those – picks in the third round for us my point and i think the thing that has changed since one of our early mocks is the new kickoff return rules we have to have two returners back there you need two guys that can take it to the house trey benson september 24th 2022 93 yards to the house for fsu i'm taking trey benson because he might not see the field at running back but he can he can be a game changer back there you put him back there with whoever else you want. Is Charlie Jones or other return man? Is it uh, Travion? I don't know. But Trey Benson is going to be able to feast in that role and maybe jump in and take up, take over, you know, starting running back within a year or two. So we're going to go with that for you, Jake. All right. Thank you, Eric. You should have gone with both you, of mine. Listen, Eric. I haven't pressed it yet. If you want, I'll take Michael Penix Jr. If that's what you want. <laughs> I know you're going to take Trey Benson, so you don't have to. You have to or, or we could just go Mon all the way and just whatever Mon says, Mon gets. <laughs> all right. Here we go. So we're taking Trey Benson. So right now I have Brian Thomas, Trey Benson, but. We have, as as uh, the four of us, we have Latham 
and Benson, correct? I right. yeah. Well, I, if you're doing them sim, that's what it is. But I thought we were keeping our own personal ones to share at the oh, end. I of the am. Show. Okay. I so my, pick, my picks is Eric's picks. Everybody else okay. has your own. Results. Sure. Okay. So we do see uh, Travandre Sweat went off the board fifty something. Let's see. Get it here. Tavondre Sweat went off the board 58 to the Packers, so he did fall. Um, that's falling 17 picks, so they might be factoring in some of those things. We had, uh, I think the Steelers took uh, Mons guy, Rook or Orohoro. Uh, let's see who else significant has gone. Peyton Willis to the Eagles. Cooper Beebe went to the Ravens, so we're seeing a lot of the guys that we like going to opponents. Uh, not so happy about that. And let's see, we're sitting here at 80 and our top players on the board, Jonathan Brooks, Ricky Pearsall, Will Shipley, Devontez Walker, Javon Bullard, Trevin Wallace. I mean, this is, to me, this is lining up. We have a nice wide receiver sitting here, but uh, let's go to, to Justin first. What do you see? Let's go, like Justin, because we already know what the pick is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like Pearsall there, of course. Um, but, uh, I mean, we just grabbed a skill player. I'd probably be more tempted with what we have so far. Now, remember, Justin, you're doing your own, too. So, yeah. So, if you like so, Pearsall, you take him. Yeah. So, in, in my draft, it would probably be Pearsall here because now we've gone. Uh, DT, o, D, D line, O line, wide receiver. So I'm liking that. Um, so that's lining up nice for me. But in this draft, in our draft here, we've went offensive tackle and running back. So I'm probably looking at a guy here for the Bengals who I think uh, is very physically gifted. Production hasn't really matched, I think, what his ability would suggest. But uh, Mason Smith out of LSU is a really intriguing player there. I think at 87, who uh, 85, who uh, checks some boxes uh, in terms of filling a hole on the defensive line. Okay. What do you got, Jake? Uh, well, I, I'm. I mean, for me, for me personally. I have Brian Thomas and Trey Benson. I have completely fixed the Bengal skill positions <laughs> single-handedly. Right, You're welcome. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm now. I'm going to go offensive line because, as we talked about, as we talked about, and, and Justin made very clear that we have got to take a receiver and offensive lineman in the first three rounds of this draft. And Rosengarten, a guy that I drafted the last time we did a mock, is sitting there. Give me offensive tackle from Washington, Roger Rosengarten. And now I have taken one of the elite wide receivers in this draft, and now I've taken a offensive tackle, the best one still available. So give me Roger Rosengarten. Nice. I like Mark? that pick. I like that pick. Uh, you know, I, there's a lot of great names here. I, I love Mason Smith. Uh, I know I just uh, picked the defensive lineman last pick. But you want to talk about absolutely just resetting, uh, you know, that, that Bengals defensive line room. Dwayne Carter from Duke I like also. But I will say this, going back to Mike Renner's tweet from Pro Football Focus, I think I have to get a wide receiver here. I love Pearsall. I love Walker from North Carolina. Walker's maybe an inch taller. Very comparable speed-wise. I think Walker's a tad faster. But Pierce, uh, Pearsall, we've talked about him a lot. Justin has. I've watched these insane catches, his highlights. I think the guy's going to be one hell of a slot receiver. Uh, I'm going to take uh, Ricky Pearsall, wide receiver from Florida, as my first third-round pick. Okay. Well, I <clears throat> yes, I have. Um, uh, it's like... We selected all offense, but uh, I'm going to go with Pierce Hall. I think that's a consensus pick. Um, I, I just I don't think you can pass a guy up like that who's sitting there at this at this point. Well, I Justin, think, can he play on the outside? Yeah, 
I, I mean, his best fit is the slot, but I, he's got the type of speed that will allow him to play multiple positions. So, and and, and let me okay. say this: I, I do want to be very clear about this. If our draft, if we're going by Eric's picks, I, I agree. I'm taking Ricky Pearsall here, no doubt about it. He is the pick for me. If we're going by Eric's draft, I, I would agree 100%. Ricky Pearsall is the pick, but my draft is still a lot better. So. <laughs> Jeez. All right, let's go to the third round. Uh, next pick. Are, are we doing all seven or just five? Just five. Just five rounds. We okay. Cool. We don't have enough. We're already. We already got to probably rush through these because it's. Uh, okay. We're getting up to an hour here. So we'll uh, we'll try and get through these a little bit faster. Uh, maybe we'll mute Jake. Uh, mute since me. He's already, he doesn't need any more draft picks. He's already solved it all for us. I solved the offense for sure. <laughs> All right, we're sitting at 97. And there you go. Smith and Carter are still available. So that kind of worked out for us. Yep. That is awesome. All right, who's going to go first? Tell us about – I'll, I'll, I'll go first. I'll go first. Go I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and go. Again, for my draft right now, I have Brian Thomas, Trey Benson, um, Rose and Garden, and now I'm going to add to the defensive tackle room uh, to make Mon happy. Just so you guys know, I have an elite wide receiver, an elite running back. I have the best offensive tackle still on the board in the third round, uh, well, the best offensive tackle that was on the board in the third round. And now I'm going to add Mason Smith, defensive tackle from LSU, uh, now I have fixed the defensive line, the offensive line, the running back room, and the receiver room. You, gentlemen, are welcome. <laughs> Mute. Mute. Go ahead, Justin. <laughs> yeah, Mason Smith here uh, with with how what we've done on the board. I mean, that just makes perfect sense. Um, you're talking about a guy who was a five-star recruit. He's massive, great athleticism. I, there's a lot of untapped potential there. That would be that's a that's a great fit in uh, and great value at pick 97. Great, um, Eric. Can you go up a little bit? I want to see what number 100, 10, what we're looking at here. Uh, I'm just looking at needs. I know the Bengals need to add a cornerback. Uh, still potentially pick one up in free agency, but Mason Smith to me and or Dwayne Carter. Uh, I'm going to double up on the defensive line. I think those guys are just that good. Uh, I, I agree. I In my mock, I'm going to pick Mason Smith, not to copy Jake, but that's who I would pick. Well, I mean, that's <clears throat> three for three, so we got to go with him. I, and you're copying <laughs> Justin, not Jake. So. Yeah, okay. Oh, I, thought I, Jake I went first. first. I went first, okay. just, just so we're clear. <laughs> Roll it along, roll it along. Yeah. <laughs> All right, where are we at here? We are at 115, right? Coming up 115. Hey, we yep. might be able to yep. double up. Carter's still there. And Carter is still there at pick 115. So is Austin Booker, Audric Estime, offensive tackle for Maryland. Anybody jump out at you guys here? Justin, Justin was the defensive – was the cornerback from Kentucky any good? Uh, yeah, although I got to say, when I look at this board right here, the running back from Notre Dame would probably be, since I've went D-tackle, offensive guard, wide receiver, D-tackle, I'd probably be looking at the Notre Dame running back, who I really liked and was a load. He's a big guy, right? For the Fighting Irish this year. Yeah. And, um, he, and then the and other guy, I really he's got a lot of hype. Yeah, Justin, big guy. I think he's, like he's got a lot of hype uh, this past like week and a half. He does. I've seen his name thrown around quite a bit. Yeah, I'm I'm going with him for my pick, but um, I'd also be very very uh, tempted to go Tyron Hopper here, T uh, rangy athletic linebacker from Missouri. Uh, great coverage, plays the run well, uh, very athletic. He was a really nice. He would be a. He'd be a really nice get, I think, at this stage of the game as well. But I'm going uh, Notre Dame running back here. Okay. 
You want to go ahead, hey, you want me to go? You. Go. you? Um, I'll go. It don't matter. I'll go real quick. Okay, go ahead. Go I'll, ahead. I'll, go, I'll go quick. I'll let you finish this one off. Um, I am going to copy Justin here. Um, uh, Justin's an SEC guy, and I, I look at I look at this linebacker room, guys, and I see obviously Logan and Jermaine. We know those are the the two starters. We re-signed Akeem Davis, and that's it, guys. And again, I, I know the Bengals don't don't use more than two linebackers usually. But if Justin says this guy is a, is a rangy, athletic guy, uh, could remind me a lot of uh, maybe a a better Akeem Davis Gaither. I don't know if I, I don't know if that's the right word, but um, I'm going to go that Tyron that Tyron Hopper uh, linebacker from Missouri. I, I, again, I think um, I think uh, that the Bengals do have to find a linebacker somewhere in this draft to help fill out that linebacker room. Cause right now there's only really three backers um, that you would feel comfortable with being in a football game. So give me Hopper here. Um, I'm going to go with my guy, Justin and say Tyron Harper. All right, Juan, go ahead, bud. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to, Stick with the need. I think uh, you can never have enough cornerbacks. I've picked two defensive linemen. I got my offensive linemen. I got a uh, skill position player, uh, a wide receiver, the wide receiver from Florida. I am intrigued about the Notre Dame running back. Also, he's a you know, he's different from the guys we have. He's more of a bruiser. Can you go up a little bit, um, Eric? What do we got here? Um, well, I like Wingo too from LSU, but I've already picked two defensive linemen. I'm going to take the cornerback from uh, Kentucky. He's what, 5'11", 200 pounds, fast guy. Um, get him in there. Hopefully he can develop and become a big contributor over the year and next year. So I'm going to pick um, Phillips from Kentucky as my pick. Okay. So based on, you know, as, we're, as you're talk, talking about it, linebacker doesn't jump out at me because how much playing time are they going to get? But then we go back to my Trey Benson argument, this whole new kickoff rule. We're going to need special team players. We're going to need more linebackers. We're going to need more people that can make those those tackles because the kick return is coming back. So I'm going to go with, with Justin and Jake and go with Hopper here. All right, here we go. Fifth we're round. We're moving on to the fifth round. Luke McCaffrey goes off. Um, Cam Hart. Wow, Cam um, Hart's really – Cam Hart's fallen a little bit, right? Yeah. I remember, I remember him being uh, a day two guy, and um, now he, I really haven't heard his name thrown around very much anymore. Here we sit at pick 149. Interesting, some of these uh, people that, that fell a little bit, Audric Estime. Bell to 141, Jordan Travis. Actually, I think that's a little bit – picking him a little bit high based on his injury. Um, let's see where we sit here. We've got <clears throat> top available players are New Hampshire running back, uh, a lot of running backs. Uh, your giant tight end, Theo Johnson, sitting there at ranked 130. Offensive guard. Uh, Mon, who jumps out at you here? We'll let you go um, first. I'm going to go with my mock. I like the running back from USC. We talked about the Notre, uh, the Notre Dame running back as being a bruiser. This guy is too. I think he's 5'9", 5'10", about 220 pounds. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, you know he's going to have the toughness. And we got smaller backs right now. I think uh, uh, Moss and Brown are about 205. We're going to need somebody that can convert on third and one, third and short if needed, fourth and one. I'm going to pick uh, – Lloyd from USC as my selection. What do you got, Justin? What are you next? I'm gonna make this short and sweet. Uh, to me, obvious uh, option here is Theo Johnson. Big, athletic tight end fills a need. I think that's a pretty comfortable pick based off of where where we went so far in the draft. He, he, regardless of who you're looking at, whether it's one of us or the, the combined uh, mock. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to double up on my guy, Justin here. 
Theo Johnson's my pick too. The guy's 6'6", 260 pounds. Uh, he is a, a red zone threat. Obviously, we didn't, we weren't able to get Brock Bowers, and now we've completed the tight end room with Theo Johnson. He's the best player uh, on the board too, as far as our needs go um, at this point in the draft. So, like uh, Justin said, whether it's uh, your mock, Eric, or my mock, I'm going Theo Johnson, tight end from Penn State. Yeah, that's that's going to be our pick here because I mean we've been talking tight end over and over for how many years now? One of these times we're going to get it right. So um, <laughs> he's staring you at the face. You got to grab him. So I'm going to go ahead and pick him, and we're going to move on. All right. That is. Are we going to? That's, oh, that's are we doing five, five or six? Five rounds, just five. Okay, that's it then. That's we're it. Then. We are done. We are done, and and again, I think. Um, you know, uh, you look at uh, Eric's Eric's draft, the offensive tackle, uh, running back, wide receiver, defensive tackle, linebacker, tight end. Um, you know, my, my draft positionally is very similar to that, although, you know, I took the wide receiver in the first round and then the offensive tackle in the third round. Um, but I think overall, guys, we we all have the right idea. We we understand what these needs are for the Bengals. And um, I don't know, Ma, are you happy with your draft? I am, but looking at the one on the board here that Eric selected, I would be very happy with this if this is the way it shook out in, in a few weeks. I mean, uh, you hit it right on the head. Every one of these guys are w- would fill a need. I'm happy with my draft also. Six players that we picked in this mock, three offense, three defense. Uh, I, I love it. Um, you know, I think it makes the roster better. It, it, it improves the trenches. I picked three trench players. I think Latham, uh, Oahoro, and Mason Smith will come in and be key contributors for years to come. The running back from USC, I'm really excited about. I was reading up a little bit more on him. Uh, he's a five-star recruit coming out of high school, 5'9", 220, 440. Uh, that's, uh, you know, like Eric, what you were mentioning about these new kickoff rules. You know, we need more playmakers back there because you're going to see a lot more uh, returns this year. He could fill yeah. that need big time. Justin, how about you? You happy with yours, bud? Yeah, I mean, I I, I got to be honest. I think we all had we all hit the same marks in different orders. But if we come out with any one of these drafts or the the kind of the combined mock there, I mean, I'd be happy. I think the only area we really didn't address. Uh, between the th- the four of us was corner. I'd, I'd really like to see that on the top five rounds. But, I mean, if it plays out like this and maybe you go grab a, a corner, the first pick of the sixth round, that's pretty nice. Well, uh, and again, again, too, you know, we talked a little bit about this. Uh, are the Bengals done in free agency, right? I mean, uh, are the Bengals still maybe looking for a veteran corner out there to maybe fill that corner spot. I don't, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see, but we are going to see in two weeks uh, where, where these, where this Bengals draft uh, kind of, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how it all kind of pans out because the Bengals do have 10 picks and they can move up and down this draft. We didn't do that in our draft simulator, but I really see this as being a draft where the Bengals might actually take that leap, guys, and move up uh, in, in this draft. <laughs> give us a C minus. Come on, Jeff. Be nice, man. <laughs> Jeff, give us a C minus. Well, I think was- they were given. I think they were given Eric's draft a yeah. C minus, yeah. which I would agree with. Good job, Jeff. If that's for Eric. <laughs> Mine obviously would not be a C minus, Jeff. That was my high school average C minus. Hey, it's all good. <laughs> that that's better than mine. So good job, good job there. Hey, are right, we going to do our? When are we going to do our final mock? How do you guys want to do this? Um, well, in two weeks, we have a very very awesome special guest coming on to lead us into the draft. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll do. Uh, mock 5.0 next week, or we'll have to do uh, an extra show. How about, think? We'll, we'll, I think we, we can do, do it the night before the draft. We do that Wednesday the 24th. We could come up with our own seven round mock draft and just share it. We don't have to go through the simulator, but uh, yeah. hey, no, 
that, that that's fine. All right, well, let's do that. And uh, Justin, you got to be there. You got to be there. Mock 5.0. Justin, right. thank, thank, thank you once again. Go ahead, man. Clark, taking Kate, Caitlin Clark. We'll play her at corner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Justin, thank you very much for, uh, for joining the show again tonight. I want to thank all of our listeners for joining in uh, with all the great comments tonight. Thank you guys so much for tuning in every week and, uh, and listen to uh, us, uh, us talk Bengals. All right, guys, that is another edition of the Bengals Pulse. Uh, as always, make sure you check us out on all the awesome podcast platforms, Apple, Stitcher, Spotify. If you like this podcast, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. And if you did like it, make sure you give us that five-star review. We very much appreciate that. As always, follow Mon on Twitter at the Fire Mon. Follow me on Twitter at Coach Jake Owens 9 Follow Eric on Twitter at eFlash with two H's, 88. Follow the Wincinnati Pod on Twitter at Wincinnati Pod. And follow the Bengals Pulse always on Twitter at Bengals underscore Pulse 9 on Instagram. The same without the at Bengals underscore Pulse 9. And follow our guy Justin Wells on Twitter at Justin L. Wells. Justin, once again, thanks very much, buddy, for joining us tonight. He is Mon. He is Eric. Justin, I am Jake. Thanks, guys. Who day? Big fans. We will see you soon. No balloons.